I didn't play the game for the money. I didn't play the game for to be famous. I'd love to just be an individual that's, uh, that's very colorful. Forget all about the hair and the tattoos, watching play basketball. I didn't even think I was going to amount to anything. Hard work, that's all it is, hard work. I just went there and just let my raw talent just take over. That's what Dennis does. He does it better than anybody in the league. Unbelievable hustle play by Roger. He just wants it a little bit more than everybody else right now. I'm basically like James Brown, the hardest working NBA player. If you ask a lot of people who they'd rather be, one day I think they'll say Dennis Rodman in the NBA. When Dennis Rodman entered the Basketball Hall of Fame this summer, his enshrinement speech was much like his career in the NBA. Unconventional, unpredictable, and full of passion. A relentless rebounder and tenacious defender, Dennis wore his emotions on his sleeve. On the eve of his enshrinement, Rodman sat down to reflect on his life and career, revealing a side that few have ever seen. You know, you and I have something in common. We were both janitors at one point in our lives. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of people are janitors. I remember I could not work the buffer to save my life. You Were you OK with the buffer? I didn't even work the buffer. I just pretty much worked the mop. Did you? The mop okay. and, 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 the, and the sweeper. That was it. I think the, the other guys that worked there, you know, that have been there for a long time, worked the buffer and stuff like that. Yeah. I just worked the mop and all the other stuff, the cleaning stuff, the dusters and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I was only 18. When you were at that age, what, what did you think your life was going to be like? Where did you think you were going to go with your life? I, it was nowhere. My life was nowhere. I mean, I was pretty much uh, just, just been a drifter. I had no direction. I had no, uh, no vision, no idea or, or insight of what's going on about the world. Mm. Just a little square circle I was living in back in um, Dallas, Texas. If you hadn't grown six inches, <laughs> <laughs> seven inches, yeah. did that change everything? It changed somewhat because uh, before that, before when I was 20, when I was 20 or well, 21, I started playing ball. I still actually started growing. I was probably like 6'1", six, 6'2", six, and I just kept going to the gym every day. Every day I was going to the gym, playing ball. I was dunking at 6'1", six, 6'2", six, I was dunking. I was doing all these things, but as each day or each month progresses, I kept getting taller. Mm. And I just kept saying, wow. This, but, I, but I still didn't have no, no direction, no vision. If I didn't grow six, seven inches or even two or three inches, maybe two or three inches, I would, I'd be still back there. Basketball would offer an opportunity to escape those bleak surroundings when Rodman caught the eye of scouts from an NAIA school in Oklahoma. Two coaches came down and got me from the projects, drove me down to, to, uh, to try out. I tried out, I, was, I sent an offer, signed this three-year uh, scholarship, and I went back home the next day, and my last words was, I'm not gonna come back unless I make something of my life. Rodman's life would turn further in 1983, after he befriended a young boy at a basketball camp. Soon after he met, the boy invited Rodman to his home, and Rodman lived in this home with that family, the Riches, for most of the next three years. So how did that change you? It, it took a little while because, you know, you send people in, in, in the projects, you know, being stabbed. Uh, your mom is cussing at you, your dad's cussing at you, people are cussing at you. I mean, you're used to that type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day, every day, you're not used to someone coming to you. So how do you like your steak? Or how do you like your potatoes? Or, so uh, anyway, uh, we're going to make some sweet tea. So you guys sit outside, we make a picnic. You don't, you're not used to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know, so you're not used to crystals and nice forks and, and plates and mm -hmm. stuff. And that's what they did every day. And it was just, it was kind of odd because I never, never knew this was actually going to happen to me. Perhaps the most profound change resulted from the man of the house, James Rich, who introduced structure and discipline into Dennis's life. He used to get us up at uh, 5.30 in the morning to go and uh, get the cows and the calves and, and, and the pasture and stuff like that. We had to get up, and then next thing you know, when he, when he leaves at 5.30, we go back to bed, then he comes again at 6.30, and then we had to jump up, okay, this. But that, but that, that happened for three years straight. We got up at 5.30 every morning. I mean, some days it'd be like 10, 14 hour days at that plowing, this crazy. And I never done like that, mm. but I got so used to that, that regiment, that, that routine, because I never had a routine before. Right. And he actually pretty much paid attention to me because, because my mother never paid attention to me. She never kissed us, never hugged us. 
even though she wanted to, but she couldn't because she was working so much. And I think that that probably was more like a more of an inspiration and, and something very, that was very cool for me at the time because I, I didn't have a father. Mm -hmm. So I think he took the role of that being a father. He used to take me on the truck and say, Dennis, I need to talk to you. So when he said that, you know, he's going to go out there and talk to you about the, the birds and the bees and life. Mm -hmm you know, keep you on, on that straight and narrow path. And I think that right that really kept me really focused on the game of basketball and just, just game of, the game of life, bro. Bolstered by a strong foundation with his new family, Rodman found his footing on the court, becoming a star at Southeast Oklahoma State. When you were at school, when did you first start to realize that maybe there was a pro career possible for you? I never thought that. I never thought that. I thought I'd probably go to Europe or I'd probably go to some CBA or something like that. I'm trying to, you know, get through school, you know, try to get a degree and things, you know. And when I finish school, I just, you know, hope for the best. Though Dennis couldn't envision a future in basketball, his accomplishments did not go unnoticed. I was walking down to the uh, cafeteria and I looked at TV. Next thing you know, they said, Dennis Rodman, well, All-American. like, what? You know, all, I'm like, All-American, what? You know, I didn't know what that was. You know, I didn't know what All-American mean, you know? Yeah. I thought All-American, I said, oh, okay, great. And I said, no, dude, you, you're first team All-American. I mean, that's, that's something like, okay. Coming up, Rodman reaches the NBA mountaintop as a two-time champion with the Pistons. Hard work, that's all it is, hard work! But personal struggles lead to despair. Lost my wife, lost my daughter, and I lost Chuck. I mean, I lost everybody pretty much. And then when you're at home and you're really contemplating, what should you do, what should you do? Those four walls are closing in on you. TBS Sports presents the 1986 NBA Draft, live from New York City. Do you find it ironic of all the guys that got drafted in 86 and totally flamed out, you're the guy, you're one of the guys that <laughs> had the best career? You know, it's very weird that you say that because, like, I'm going to Hall of Fame not being as, as, as a great score, but I'm going to Hall of Fame for, for, for various reasons. And you look at other guys that, that, that was drafted in that year, a couple of guys could have been in this bracket, but they just it just never panned out. It's just weird. It's just funny how, how, how things work. And, and, and most of these guys in their whole lives and careers, when they're five years old, they are, they are, they're bred to be a basketball player. They're bred to be All-Americans. They're bred to be the All-Stars in the NBA. They're bred to be everything. Well, for me, it was the opposite. But once I got in the NBA, I've been around some veterans like Isaiah and Joe Dumars, Bill and all those guys that, that, and that was a great team there. I started to realize, started to actually pay attention. And I used to sit back and watch these guys go through this, like, you know, these drills and, and this system. And I kept thinking, I kept thinking, what can I do? What can I do to get involved? What can I do to get involved? And I just kept, you know, kept, kept playing every day, kept practicing every day, watching Adrian Danley as a guard him every day, uh, Mark Aguirre, guard those guys. I guard the toughest guys in the league at practice. And I just started studying the game more and more. I started studying the guys that I've guard against in games. I started watching films. I started just, just being a student of the game. And I just wanted to have some type of significant role on my team. Rodman thrived in that role, becoming a force on the defensive end of the floor. Thomas went down, no foul. Vincent has it blocked by Rodman. Unbelievable hustle play by Rodman. He just wants it a little bit more than everybody else right now. That's what Dennis does, he does it better than anybody in the league, and he hurts you every time. Dennis would help define the bruising image of a hard-nosed Detroit Pistons team that won back-to-back -back championships in 1989 and 90. The Pistons are winners and still champions of the world, and the Motor City still reigns supreme. Now, hard work, baby, hard work, that's all it is, hard work. But Rodman didn't only win two rings. He also formed a relationship that helped sustain him as a young man looking for guidance. How important was Chuck with that? And Chuck Day was like, my house is your house. And you know, anytime you want to come over here and just, just be around somebody, because I really have no family there. And he's pretty much more like a family. He was more like a father figure to me. He knew I didn't have a father. He knew that I still go home and get emotional by myself. You know, I had nobody to come over and talk to me. 
he was there pretty much to, uh, to keep me to keep me grounded, to keep me just, just mentally sane. I wanted this war so bad. But in 1992, Rodman learned a difficult lesson in the business of basketball. Daly and the Pistons parted ways, and Dennis hit rock bottom. It was a lot of bad times for me. There was a lot of, was a lot of negative things for me because my wife left me, took my kid, took my money, um, took everything. And that, was, that was the beginning of the end of me being in Detroit. I can't take this anymore because I didn't know how to, how to deal with these these. This, this hard time. I thought, you know, being in the NBA, we won a couple championships and everything was fine. I mean, I'm cool, you know, I got you know, some good friends and everything started to crumble around me. Were you really thinking suicide at that point? Uh, I think when you're not in the right frame of mind, and you know, I lost my someone, wife, lost my daughter, and I lost uh, Chuck. I mean, I lost everybody pretty much. And then when you're at home and you're really contemplating on uh, what, what should you do, what should you do, and, you, and those four walls are closing in on you, I just drove to the palace. I don't know why I drove there. I don't even know why I drove to the palace, right? I mean, literally right there in the parking lot. And, uh, and, I, and I was listening to Pro Jam. I was listening to Pro Jam the whole time, and I fell asleep. I think that any time, any time, because I had the gun like this, any time, if I had a, 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 any type of reaction, I could have shot that off easily by accident. I wasn't really trying to kill Dennis Rob. I was trying to, I was trying to get rid of the old one because the one that came into the NBA was no longer there anymore. Still to come. Dennis Rodman with that wild hairdo of his. Rodman undergoes a radical transformation and his new persona is a shock to the NBA. The off-court stuff sometimes overshadowed all the hard work and all the stuff he did. There's a lot of stuff that happened that made you just kind of go, really? After the 1993 season, Dennis Rodman's Pistons days were over. When he became a member of the San Antonio Spurs, a new Rodman was ready to emerge. But I love Detroit. San Antonio camp got in the picture, so they trained me for Sean Elliott, I think. Mm -hmm. And I went to San Antonio, and I was just bored at home. Bored at home, I said, God, I gotta do something, because I'm just bored. I'm, I'm just, I don't want to play this game anymore. So, you know, me and the girl I was seeing, we went to the mall, and I just, and I was just walking down the mall, and this big uh, her dress. I mean, he had to be like 6'8", about 250 pounds, and had this all this hair, man. I mean, this hair all the way down here. He said, "Come here." I said, "All right, great." He said, "What's up?" He said, "Let me dye your hair." I said, "Why? I don't need to dye." I said, "Let me dye your hair." So I went in there. I said, "All right, whatever. Maybe, maybe this this will be something for me to get you know get used to something different." He dyed my hair blonde, and um, it was a mohawk, a blonde mohawk. <laughs> Just a mohawk, but that, that right there, that right there, kind of sparked something in me right there because when I went to the San Antonio Appreciation Day, there was like fourteen thousand people. So he gave me the mic. I just want to say one thing: you can like me or you can hate me. I know one thing: when I step on this damn floor, all I'm gonna do is get solid. When I said that, I did this. I did that, and people freaked. Freaked out when I saw the blonde hair. They freaked out of Mohawk, cause no one's ever done it in the NBA. They seen they see afros, they seen jewelry, but they never seen something that's colorful like that. Rodman for three. <laughs> well, we told you, blondes have more fun, especially this blonde. There's a classic example of what Rodman could do for you. While Rodman made valuable contributions on the court, there was also a clash of cultures. In San Antonio, you wrote about you and David Robinson, how it wasn't the best matchup. It, you guys didn't really feel each other too much. For, for him to see me 
that I was such a rebel. It's more like, you know, I would wear, I would wear women's clothes mm -hmm. and I would do all this stuff like that. Even on the road, I do all these crazy things like that. And then I see me on, on the plane. I, I got red hair, pink hair, blue hair, this, 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 this. And I'm, you know, I'm doing this, going out, having a good time, and then go on the court and grab 20 rebounds a game. And, and he used to say, dude, I, I need to talk to you about God. I'm like, okay. So we sat down one day at a restaurant and uh, he was saying, you know, if you just, you know, just understand that this, this, is, this is a type of city where people love to go to church. They are not very edgy and the whole spill. And I said, well, okay, great, cool. I said, I can't live that life. Like, all I do is come here, I'm, I'm getting paid to play basketball. I'm, I'm not getting, I'm, I'm coming here for people to like me. I'm coming here to play basketball and win. Dennis Rodman, if you forget all about the hair and all the tattoos, watch him play basketball. He can do some uh, real good things on the floor. He's a very talented young man. You bet he is. That was not a problem with Dennis Rodman, San Antonio. I did my job. I averaged 18 rebounds a game for two years there. And I did everything he possibly could. We had the best record two years in a row. To Rodman with a left hand. The Spurs were an elite team during Rodman's two seasons in San Antonio he could see the writing on the wall. I probably won't be here next year. Most likely I won't. I'm too much of a distraction, what they call distraction. San Antonio actually really propelled me mentally-wise. I just said, what the hell with everybody? I'm just going to do my thing, go out and do my job. Coming up next, Rodman tries to revive his career as a member of the Chicago Bulls, but old wounds are slow to heal. I'm going to jail across his house. Phil Jackson was there, Mike was there, Scotty was there. Phil Jackson got to the point where he said, Dennis, the first thing I want you to do is go over and apologize to Scotty Pippen. I'm like, what? In October of 1995, Dennis Rodman was on the move again. As a Piston, he had staged epic battles with the Chicago Bulls, so he couldn't escape the irony of joining forces with his one-time rival. This is Jordan, the one and one now. Rodman won't give an inch. When you knew you were going to Chicago, what was your, what was your feeling? Was it excitement? Was it apprehension? What was it? I don't think I, I said to myself, I said, wow, man, I went to, I went to Detroit now. And we used to push Scottie Pippen and uh, Michael Jordan around, and now I'm going up to play for these guys. <laughs> so, and I was just wondering how these guys going to take me. I'm over to Jerry Cross's house. Phil Jackson was there, Michael was there, Scotty was there. Phil Jackson got to the point where he said, Dennis, the first thing I want you to do is go over and I apologize to Scottie Pippen. I'm like, what? So I went outside and we talked for five minutes and stuff like that. Scotty said, it's okay. Everything is fine, man. Don't worry about it. Went back inside Field Jackson asked me, Dennis, would you like to be a Chicago Bull? I said, I don't give a damn if I'm here or not. That was my answer. And then Phil Jackson said, congratulations, Chicago Bull. He <laughs> took it as a yes. He took it as a yes. If there were any doubts about Robman's ability to fit in with the Bulls, he quickly laid them to rest. Nobody expected that. Especially when I got on the team, it's like, wait a minute, you got Dennis Rodman. Those are the plays that Dennis Rodman does to make his team great. A lot of coaches would actually design things to guard me. One time, Don Nelson actually had every four and five guy on his team face guard me from the other end of the court all the way to the other end. And Nelly is telling him, oh, foul. There's the foul. So basically, I got to concentrate on him, which I didn't give a damn how you played me. I was going to do my job. To Michael on your knees. Nope, Dennis there tipped it, tipped it again, and put that one in. He's looking back at Nelly. He had a little stare for Nelly. It didn't really phase me at all. It didn't phase me at all. I, I, I was so I was so comfortable in my surroundings. You know, I got Michael Jordan, I got Scotty Pippen, I got Phil Jackson, I got the Chicago people. That was all I needed right there. That's all. Text when you talk to me every practice at Dennis, this is all you gotta do, is this a triangle, this, this, this. And I picked it up pretty easy because I knew it, I didn't have to shoot the ball. I just got to get the rebound, play defense, and give it back to the people that needed to score. Dennis relished creating extra scoring opportunities for two of the greatest players in NBA history, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. That's a That's a have been superb. What was that 96 season like? There it is, 70 has become a reality for the Chicago Bulls. It was 
was a trip. It was a trip because basically we lost maybe one game or what? A month, a month, one game a month. That's, that's, that's incredible. We go to hotels, you see hundreds of people in the lobbies and stuff like this, wait for us to come in. It was like being like rock stars. They all want to see Superman, Batman, and Rodman. Michael's going to get his 30, Scott's going to get his 18, 7, 7. I'm going to get my 16, 17 rebound game, four or five points. We had a, a pretty much a good total package. Chicago Bulls have regained the NBA throne. Chicago is world champions once more in their sixth NBA championship. And after 14 years of playing the role of the NBA rebel, Rodman became an unlikely member of the game's most elite club. Oh my God. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> Did you ever think this was going to happen? When you really don't expect something like this in your life, you, you expect something else because the type of environment that you grew up in. Uh, I never imagined this, not even close. I didn't even think I was going to you know, amount to anything. This game has been very good to me. I could have been dead. I could have been homeless. I, I was homeless. And a lot of you guys are here that's in the Hall of Fame know what I'm talking about, living in the projects and trying to get out the projects. And, um, and I did that. But it, it took a lot of hard work and a lot of bumps, bumps along the road. What is more surprising to you, that you're going into the Hall of Fame or that you made it to 50? <laughs> I think a lot of people think that same thing. <laughs> the Hall of Fame, you know, I, I think, surprised that I made it to 50. I was really burning both ends of that camera for a long time. And that's the reason why I said that I'm surprised I'm still here. And maybe hope for that in the future, that I can actually try to be somewhat of a good, good individual and a good father to my kids. I have one regret. I wish I was a better father. <laughs> The last few years, I've actually, actually slowed down. I don't know if it's the age or just more like I'm just trying to be more of a human being, more of a productive human being. So, you know, my family should be happy.